In the heart of China's Guizhou province stands the Gupatan shiplift. It's not just a feat of engineering, it's a radical rethink of how nations move goods, overcome geography, and develop regions long considered unreachable. China has spent decades trying to link its vast interior to the rest of the country. While coastal cities surged ahead economically, places like Guizhou were held back, not by lack of ambition, but by mountains. Literally, the region's geography is some of the most challenging on Earth. Vertical cliffs, narrow valleys, and rivers that rise and fall with the monsoon season. In the past, navigating this terrain was grueling. Roads twisted like snakes, prone to landslides and delays. Boats couldn't pass upstream due to the sharp elevation gains. And building a standard lock system would have required two dozen chambers, taking hours or even days to get through. So China tried something else. Rather than redesign the landscape, they redesigned the river journey itself. The Gupatan shiplift lifts vessels up nearly 200 meters, straight up, using a gigantic water-filled chamber. Each lift can carry a fully loaded cargo ship weighing over 10,000 tons in a process that takes about 30 minutes. It's like watching a floating skyscraper rise silently into the sky. The scale is staggering. The chamber travels along reinforced concrete towers driven deep into bedrock. 256 cables guide and support the ascent, working in sync with gear systems precise enough to handle millimeter level tolerances. Sensors monitor every movement, and emergency brakes stand by to halt the system instantly if anything goes wrong. To appreciate the scale, imagine lifting the weight of a small town, dozens of trucks, containers, and cargo all at once, straight into the air. The engineering behind this involves advanced hydraulic systems, industrial grade counterweights, and the precise orchestration of thousands of moving parts, all operating under constant scrutiny. There's no room for error, especially when lives, cargo, and national trade routes depend on it. Even the environment surrounding the lift has been transformed to accommodate it. Villages nearby have modernized rapidly. New infrastructure has emerged, including ports, maintenance yards, and logistical support centers. The ship lift doesn't just move cargo. It has become a nucleus of regional development, attracting workers, engineers, investors, and tourists. But what really sets the Gupatan shiplift apart isn't just its mechanics, it's what it unlocks. Because this lift enables something that was previously unthinkable. High volume water-based cargo movement through a mountainous region previously deemed economically isolated. Guizhou is now plugged directly into the Yangtze River system, the lifeline of Chinese commerce. This isn't just about a faster route, it's about opening an economic valve that had been shut for generations. What once took days by road or demanded long detours now takes hours by river. Factories once limited to local markets now reach national buyers. Perishable goods arrive fresh. New industrial parks have emerged near the shipping corridor. The region's GDP is climbing and infrastructure has followed. Roads, rails, and warehouses springing up like roots around a newly watered plant. And the Gupatan lift is not alone. Further upstream lies the Three Gorges Dam which also includes a ship lift, this one capable of elevating 3,000 ton vessels more than 100 meters. It was the first of its kind in China, and the lessons learned there helped shape Gupatan's much larger, more complex system. At Three Gorges, ships once had to wait in long queues or navigate an elaborate multi-chamber lock system that could take hours. The addition of the ship lift drastically improved efficiency and provided a model of vertical transport that could be scaled and optimized. These lifts aren't just engineering triumphs, they're time machines for logistics, cutting delays and reducing energy consumption dramatically. Together, these lifts don't just move ships, they stitch together a nation. They form a vertical highway of commerce, feeding into a vast inland network that keeps China's economy circulating, even when coastal ports face congestion or conflict. That redundancy is no accident. As global supply chains face increasing stress, China has made internal circulation a national priority. These inland lifts, dams, and water routes are part of that strategy, quietly ensuring that goods can keep flowing, no matter what's happening abroad. The Gupatan ship lift is emblematic of how infrastructure projects can be leveraged for political and strategic gain. By connecting the interior to the coast and the coast to global markets, China isn't just facilitating commerce, it's reinforcing national unity. It's about ensuring no province is left behind no matter how difficult the terrain. 
Beyond economics, there's national pride at stake. Projects like Gupatan are symbols of technological confidence, a declaration that China can conquer any geographic challenge thrown its way. These lifts are the quiet giants of development, rarely discussed, but immensely consequential, and they're not stopping there. China's Belt and Road Initiative has put its engineers on the global stage. Countries with similar geographic constraints are now studying China's inland shipping model. Whether it's in the mountains of Central Asia or the river networks of Africa, Gupatan may well become the prototype for lifting entire economies, not just cargo. The data backs it up. Since the Gupatan lift was completed, trade volume through the region has increased significantly. Freight costs have dropped, transport times have been slashed. For local manufacturers and exporters, the lift has turned a once costly logistical challenge into a competitive advantage. Tourism has followed suit. Visitors now travel to see the lift in action. Viewing platforms, guided tours, and multimedia displays have turned a piece of critical infrastructure into a cultural attraction. People come to witness how steel and water, when choreographed precisely, can rewrite the rules of movement. There's even talk of expanding the concept, building smaller lifts to serve mid-sized rivers, connecting towns and cities to the growing inland trade grid. With each new link, the system becomes more powerful and less dependent on any single route. In the future, we could see entire regions reimagined around infrastructure like this, where rivers no longer mark the end of navigation, but the beginning of possibility. And the Gubaton lift is likely just the beginning. China is already applying the same design logic to other terrains, from high altitude plateaus to low lying floodplains. Vertical mobility, once a niche concept, is becoming a powerful tool in the country's economic playbook. It's easy to overlook these projects. They're not flashy, they don't dominate skylines. But their impact is profound. They transform economies not overnight, but permanently. And they do so with mechanical grace lifting entire industries, quite literally, to new heights. And there's still so much to learn from it. The Gupatan shiplift is not just a tool for trade. It's a platform for experimentation, for policy integration, and even for sustainable planning. Experts now study its energy usage, environmental footprint, and regional development patterns to guide future megaprojects in similar regions. As the world becomes more uncertain, the need for resilient infrastructure only grows. Not everything can or should depend on seaports and shipping lanes halfway around the world. Sometimes the best solution is to build a path through your own mountains. China has done more than solve a logistics problem. It has rewritten the rules for inland development. And many other countries are following its path. So if you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe.